It's supposed to be another hot summer in New York. Everywhere, in fact. And these past two summers were some of the hottest in recorded history, according to Copernicus Climate Change Service in the EU. It's a bit cooler tonight, thank goodness. But if you want, uh, close your eyes and imagine it's one of those nights in August in which it's too hot to even have an appetite for dinner. And so, after sweating all day, you come home and are now sweating in bed. Your air conditioner is making a lot of noise, but not a lot of cool air. Having a tough time getting the temperature to the 60 to 67 degree range, doctors say is ideal for sleep. And imagine your partner next to you, Yubi, is having a difficult time too. Every time you're about to doze off, Yubi changes positions, kicking you in the face. <laughs> It wasn't easy, but you've gotten accustomed to their preferences of sleeping head to toe. <laughs> it's a cultural thing for Yubi, who's more or less a benevolent version of the Babadook. <laughs> I've been there. When someone keeps you from sleep, uh, makes you reconsider everything about your relationship. But take a moment to remember the reasons why you are sharing a bed with them tonight. Perhaps they are good at writing letters. Perhaps they helped you through a rough time. Perhaps they were the person who taught you to not wash your face with hand soap. <laughs> or maybe it's because they were the tallest person you'd ever seen and you knew you'd have to have them. And so, uh, for the sake of your relationship, you get out of bed and head to the other room using your cell phone as a flashlight. Believe it or not, Ryan has a PhD in sound effects. <laughs> cool breezes are wonderful in summer. Don't even get me started on sprinklers. When it comes down to it, it cannot be a cold drink. They know this in southern India, where they drink spiced buttermilk to beat the heat. However, you are not in Bangalore, so you head to the fridge to get some ice for water. Ah. Remember when you used to live with the guys? <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> Cubes for my boys. <laughs> Not anymore. Now more like hot bed with UB. The place you moved in together has a fancy pants fridge with an ice maker in the door. But it's sad. You can no longer even make ice for the people you care about. Uh, tech has taken that from us, too. <laughs> and it was nice to open the freezer door when you were hot. Feel the cold on your face and hear it, too. And even if you couldn't feel the chill, I think the freezer hum would still sound cold. How would you describe the cold sound? That's okay. <laughs> Here are the coldest sounds that Ryan could find. recordings from the inside of a hedge fund manager's heart. <laughs> Ryan
Brian, what does uh, that sound like? turn the air conditioning up after that one. <laughs> it's wild to think how recent the development of electric air conditioning really is. Compared to 88% today, only 46% of U.S. homes had AC in 1975. And in 1902, no one had it, because that's when it was invented by an engineer out of Buffalo named Willis Carrier, who developed an apparatus for treating air for a publishing house in Brooklyn. Fun fact, he's buried in the same Buffalo cemetery as Rick James. <laughs> uh, we'd love to catch those ghosts having a chat. <laughs> What about the billions of people who lived before 1902? How did they stay cool? Well, the Persians used wind towers that captured and drew breezes into buildings and then out the other side. The Romans circulated water through the walls of their homes. The Native Americans in Southwest Colorado built their houses into the face of canyons so that they'd be shaded from the sun. However, for many cultures, the go-to is simple, just dealing with it. Uh, maybe God didn't intend for people to live in Phoenix. The devil did. <laughs> well, lucky for you, you got nice water, which you finish on your way back to bed. Oh, important to know that you are wearing your summer-style pajamas, i.e., just the top. <laughs> You get back in the bed, and almost immediately, you beat turns over and kicks you. <laughs> you, of course, can't kick your partner back. <laughs> when you think about signing them up for UFC, so perhaps Rose Nama Yunez can kick them for you. <laughs> Here's a question for you. Uh, does finding the right temperature determine if a relationship will survive? Any couples here uh, argue about heating and air conditioning? Yes. Yes? yes. Who wants it? What do you ask for? Cold. Really? And he wants it hot? Yes. And uh, how do you guys uh, work it out? It's cold. <laughs> That's a girl boss moment if I ever heard one. <laughs> so what do, what, do, what do you do, sir? Did you just freeze or he deals with it? He deals with it? <laughs> like by putting on a sweatshirt or you just, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Has it ever come uh, close to tearing your relationship apart? <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, what would you say holds your relationship together? She does? <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> Just kind of hanging out in the relationship. <laughs> She calls the shots, but she's got all the responsibilities, too. <laughs> and you're just hanging out playing PS2? <laughs> He's the wallet. <laughs> so you go work hard, make money during the day, and then come home and freeze? <laughs> Hey, uh, <laughs> men, men should freeze. Fair enough. And you, and you're another guy who gets chilled out every evening. Really? 
That's a nice box. That's a nice box. And you just kind of deal with it too. I have no choice. Get it out of the couch. Get out of the couch. Couch isn't always the worst. It's kind of like uh, taking a little, it's like a vacation home in your own house. You know? <laughs> how long, how many years have you been freezing? 40, okay. <laughs> Wow, 38 years, okay. Wow, this is interesting. Usually it's a little bit flip that the gentlemen like the heat co or the, the air conditioning and the women want the temp, but are it any other cold women in the crowd? <laughs> they are. Uh, do you guys argue about the heat and air conditioning? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, who wants it hot and who wants it cold? Weird. Okay. Wow, I had no idea that all of, uh, these all of the women, and, uh, female fans of mine, are trying to freeze their husbands to death. <laughs> Make them sluggish. personally feel that finding the right temperature together does help a great bit. Whether it be in the warm bed on a winter night or front porch with a breeze. Actually, attack with porches. All you need is two of those white plastic chairs placed directly in the driveway or on the sidewalk in front of your home. Just good molded plastic chairs. With armrests, you will be the working class king and queen of your block. <clears throat> That's what my grandparents used to do. Same as they would have done in the living room, they would sit outside and not talk. <laughs> Maybe that's the key. Just have five kids and work your body to arthritis so that you can be completely content sitting still together. <laughs> However, I'm not ready for a kid, but I do want a cow so freaking bad. <laughs> I love goats, want to buy one for my niece without her parents' permission. <laughs> but personally, I want a cow. This was decided last summer while petting one named Henrietta at the Sawyer County Fair. A tuff of brown hair atop her head, I learned that Henrietta was an American brown Swiss. Not only are they handsome cows, but their milk has a perfect fat to protein ratio for cheese making. Plus, ever since I was young, I've wanted a 1,300 pound friend. <laughs> because as they say, a life cannot be measured in money, but by the total mass of your friends. So my wish is that everyone in the world could have a cow. Spice buttermilk on warm evenings for everyone. Not only that, but on nights you can't sleep, you can go outside and talk to your cow. Bend your ear for a carrot, Henrietta. You pat her side and you tell her how the city has been taking it out of you more than usual this summer. It's hot and it smells, and there's no peace except in sleep, which you can't seem to find. You can't even go for a walk without being advertised to or recorded by cameras in those Link NYC kiosks. And even in the park, planes buzz overhead. I got it pretty good, you tell your cow, but am I truly free here if I will be arrested for peeing outside? <laughs> And will I ever feel completely comfortable sharing a bed with you, B? Henrietta says nothing and continues chewing her carrot. Don't take this the wrong way, girl, but I wish I had your sweet cow ignorance. You have no idea you hasten the warming each time you pass gas. <laughs> but I'm aware that I do when I turn on my AC. I wish I could pretend you all right, Joe? 
says you be, and turns to face you in bed, not able to sleep either. No, it's too hot. The AC is too loud, and I don't have a retired dairy cow. Sorry to complain. <laughs> Yubi gets up and disappears out the door. You hear the rumble of the fridge, and Yubi comes back with an ice cube. Here, Yubi says, and puts it in your hand. Hold it. Can you feel the coldness in your hand? Going up your arm, and you can't help but laugh because you remember that you be learned English by watching Do the Right Thing. <laughs> Move it to your other hand, Yubi says. Can you feel the chill go up the left side of your body as well? Now put it on your forehead. You do, and the cold radiates through your head and then the rest of your body as well. As it melts, your worry does too. It's magic, you say. No, says Yubi. It's ice. <laughs> Thanks, Yubi. I'm glad to be in a relationship with you. You hold sweaty hands and fall asleep like you are dead. The hum of your air conditioner blends with all the air conditioners on your block, and those join with the hum of the air conditioners in your neighborhood, which join the chorus of all the air conditioners in New York City. And if uh, you didn't fall asleep in the crowd, um, I wish you a good night. A round of applause for Ryan Dan. And thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, feel free to touch the ice on your way out.